land explored by our ancestors extends from Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists, led by pilgrim of the 21st century Sapari Skak, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. What new facts about the ancestors were found in Vietnam? Why was the military leader, a native of the Jalayir tribe, Sogatu, defeated? What is the secret of the 8th century old tower? In Vietnam, the participants of the Trails of Nomads scientific expedition have found a plenty of information about the ancestors. Many artifacts associated with the bloody battles of the 13th century are kept in the rich funds of the National Museum in Haiphong. Ancient sharp stakes are kept in the museum. This artifact was used to pierce ships, weapons and other accessories of Mongolian soldiers who sank along with the ships. A lot of porcelain and earthenware dishes are exhibited in the National Museum. Here one can see examples of weapons, sabers and daggers. Local museums display numerous artifacts. All conquerors came and stayed here for a short time. Therefore, of course, one cannot say that they left a big mark on history. We can say that at the end of the 13th century, our ancestors were here as part of the army of Kublai Khan from Yuan Empire. After the completion of the research work of the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads in Haiphong, the scientists went to the province of Quinh Yang, which is located 300 kilometers from the Vietnamese city of Da Nang. Quinh Yang is located in the south of Vietnam. The area of the province is 6,000 square kilometers. The population is 1.5 million people. This is a picturesque region on the coast of the South China Sea. There is everything here. water forests and mountains. From the 7th to the 17th century, Quinh Yang was the capital of the Champa Kingdom. Then it was called Vijaya. Today our expedition arrived in the city of Vijaya. It was the center of the Champa Kingdom. We intend to collect information about the ancestors. They arrived here as part of Kublai Khan's large army at the end of the 13th century to capture the Champa Kingdom. The ancestors of the Yuan Empire reached Champa across the Sea of China. In 1280, Kublai Khan ordered the conquest and subjugation of the Champa Kingdom to the closest and most loyal military leader Sogatu. Historical documents contain information that Sogatu was a native of the Jalair clan. At first, the kingdom recognized the domination of the great Kagan, but then refused to fulfill the requirements. In 1282, without waiting for an answer to the letter of the Kagan, after the news of the improper reception of the emperor's ambassadors, Sogatu with a 5,000 army landed 20 kilometers from the kingdom. First of all, they easily captured the capital of the Champa kingdom. There was no resistance. The ruler, Indra Varman, 
fled to the mountains with his army, the inhabitants also left the city. Sogatu's large army was in need of food. Their situation worsened every day. In addition, climatic condition of Vietnam was difficult for the Mongol warriors. They could hardly stand the tropical heat and high humidity. Heavy rains, which had been here for months, weakened their health. The population waged a skillful partisan war, and this also significantly weakened the Mongol army. The partisan movement was led by the son of King Champa Indravarman V. <laughs> The locals here are very organized. We saw this later. During the war with the Americans, the Vietnamese also fought back because they were good at guerrilla fighting methods. The army of Sogatu, as a result of the partisan confrontation and difficult climatic conditions, was forced to retreat from their original plans. This was about 1282-1283. The number of soldiers decreased, the losses were great. To explain the situation, Sogantu sent people to China. Earlier, the Mongolian Navy and Army failed during the reconnaissance operation to Japan. They suffered heavy losses. There was no way to replenish the ranks of the dead soldiers. Therefore, Sogatu went to Champa with only 5,000 warriors. In 1283, messengers arrived in China to ask for help from Kublai Khan. It was decided to send a military leader named Ali Kai to help. He joined people. Kublai Khan provided 7,000 strong elite guard, consisting of Kipchak warriors under his command. 8,000 more Chinese volunteers joined them. Approximately 5 to 20,000 troops were formed by Ali Kai. But in 1284, Sogatu, without waiting for help, retreated to North Vietnam. Sogatu retreated to North Vietnam with only one goal to attack the Champa Kingdom from the border with Dai Viet, since the rulers of Dai Viet were already Mongol vassals. The Kipchak military leader hoped for their support. Sogatu's plan was also supported by Kublai. In 1284, from the north, Kublai's nephew Togon, at the head of a large army, went down to the south. He conquered the city of Hanoi in Dai Viet. After that, he went down to Haiphong. Sogatu intended to unite with his army and headed up from south to north. <laughs> Mongolian commander Togon, on the orders of Kublai Khan, led the campaign against Champa. He required from the Dai Viet ruler Chan Yang Tong to let the Mongol army pass through the Dai Viet. Chan Yang Tong agreed to fulfill the demand. However, the commander of Dai Viet, Cheng Han Dao, in order to prevent the Mongolian army, will gather a detachment of 15,000. Togon will smash the army of Cheng Han Dao and capture Thong Long in 1285. That time, Sogatu was heading towards Togon. However, his plans didn't work out and he died in battle. This is how the leader of the sea fleet of the Yuan Empire, an authoritative commander, a loyal commander of the great Kagan, a brave Perg by origin, the brave Sogatu died. Was he buried with the honors of a worthy glorious warrior? Were his remains delivered to the Yuan Empire? Nobody knows about this. <laughs> What can we say about this city? In the army of Sogatu, in the detachment of Ali Kai, there were more than 7,000 Kipchak warriors. They made up the Imperial Guard. 
In the army of Sogatu there were Jalayir and other representatives of the Turkic tribes, which are now part of the numerous Kazakh clans, including Naimans, Kereys, Mirkids, Tatars and Mongols. Therefore, we can confidently say that our ancestors were here in the city of Vijaya. Now it is the city of Kuinyan. Besides the Kipchaks, the Kublai Khan Imperial Guard included Kangils, Naimans, Argans, Kereys, and Merkids. All of them are representatives of the steppe Turkic tribes. The historian Yaroslav Pidipchuk wrote that in the elite units of the Yuan Empire, there were such Kipchak Batirs as Sidor, Tutuka, Ulke Bador, Baitimur, Hassan, and Kucha Bador. Baitimur was a confident and representative of Kublai Khan. This speaks of the high authority of our ancestors and the special trust in them. In 1286, Kublai Khan wanted to equip a military campaign to dive yet and Champa for the third time. However, he did not have enough time to prepare the army. It took time to collect weapons, food, horses and the soldiers. Therefore, the third trip to Vietnam was organized only in 1287. 1287 in 1287-88, the military leader Togon led a very impressive army. However, different sources write differently. Someone wrote that there were 100,000 soldiers. Others believed that there were 300,000. But the main thing is that they defeated Vietnamese army and headed south downward. That time, troops from the other side also entered Champa. After that, the ruler of Champa was forced to submit and sign an agreement for the payment of established taxes. The Vietnamese were very brave. They resisted the Mongol conquerors. Written sources speak of stubborn resistance to the campaigns of Kublai Khan's army. Rice-growing peasants, their wives and children took part in the fight against the enemy. The Mongol warriors did not expect such stamina from them. Thanks to their unity and solidarity, they were able to resist the aggressive enemy. The Vietnamese fought heroically. They showed strength of spirit and solidarity in the fight against the enemy. They fought against the French and Americans. Despite the fact that America was very strong, it failed to defeat the Vietnamese. These two towers in Queen Yan are symbols of days gone by. They are witnesses of historical events from the 11th to 14th centuries. Many centuries later, not a single brick has collapsed. The architectural monument is in good condition this day. We are now in the city of Qinyan. In the 10th, 14th centuries, it was the capital of the Champa Kingdom. At the end of the 11th, beginning of the 12th centuries, the local population turned toward faith and built this 100-meter structure. Mongol conquerors destroyed everything, but they did not touch religious spiritual temples. Our ancestors who came to this land conquered territories but did not destroy cities. The proof of this is the towers that we saw. They stand intact, almost intact. Their task was not to destroy cities and their inhabitants. They only wanted to subjugate them, force their rulers to pay taxes. This was the policy of Kublai Khan. This policy of the Chinese Empire has existed since early times. They try to burden other states with peace negotiations, diplomatic methods and receive only taxes from them. 
However, some states did not obey. They killed ambassadors. All this angered Kublai Khan. The leader of the expedition, Sapar Iskak, stood for a long time near the towers, touching the ancient walls. Did our ancestors who arrived here as part of the Mongol army leave any signs, traces on this tower? For example, about their tribe? These were the questions that worried the scientist. He seemed to be trying to hear the hoofs of the horses of his ancestors. He wanted to imagine a picture of the distant past. He stood for a long time near the towers and looked into the distance. <laughs> If you've noticed, the towers were built in different styles. This one, on the left, was built in the style of the local Champa architecture. The plinth is built of bricks, of compressed bricks. The top is also made of bricks. When they use bricks in other countries, bricks were fired in hot kilns at a temperature of 1000 degrees but they did not exceed the firing temperature by more than 580-600 degrees. At the second tower, as you can see, the plinth was made of stone. In the upper part of the tower, stone birds were made in four corners. This is the architectural style of Kampuchea. Khmer style was used here. At that time, the Kingdom of Champa and Cambodia worked very closely. Historian scientist Sabar Scott carefully examined the tower, erected 800 years ago, and found similarities with the monuments built on the Kazakh land. They have similarities in construction. As a builder, I noticed, for example, that the structure was built of baked bricks. The bricks are very thin, 25 by 25 centimeters. Their thickness is 4.5 to 5 centimeters. There is no mortar between them. Perhaps there was some kind of glue between them. We also had many different tricks, including using glue-like products instead of mortar. Second, there are various patterns here too. For example, images of a lotus. We have similar image called Koshkar Muez. <laughs> Another feature is that their doors are directed towards the sunrise. In Kazakhstan, during the construction of mausoleums, towers, mosques or yurts, where people live, the doors are specially directed towards the rising sun. They have similar traditions. The members of the scientific expedition Trails of Nomads along the way visited the city of Konchimin. Hammer and sickle, five-pointed star, red flag, white dove. This is how the streets of Konchimin are decorated. The monument to the national hero Trong Hung Dao seems to remind of the victory of the Thirty Year War in the 13th century. The Vietnamese people erected a monument to the glorious military leader in Haiphong and Ho Chi Minh City for their descendants to remember history. April the 9th is the Victory Day. Summing up, a high spirit, a tempered body, a strong character. All this about our ancestors who left their mark in the history of the greatest powers. Therefore, we tirelessly seek information about them. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues its work. Next stop is Indonesia.